The evil, capitalist, blood-sucking elite of Hollywood studios are trying to starve the poor, unfortunate writers into submission. And all I can say to this atrocity is, go capitalism. <laughs> Make some eats of bugs if you can. Please replace every last single one of them with a sapient typewriter if at all possible. <laughs> <Be> <laughs> Because, of course, um, this this is one of the primary divides between the two sides at the moment. You know, obviously they're, they're complaining about a lack of pay or rates or how much they can get before they even do anything, yada yada yada, the usual nonsense. But one of the biggest issues is that the, uh, the Writers Guild, and soon to be also the Screen Actors Guild strike, is about the guilds wanting wide-ranging and extensive protections against artificial intelligence being used in entertainment, either to just straight out replace their asses, or to, um, to, to supplement them by helping them out, or, and here's the big kicker, learning from them. Because, of course, the writers currently want protection against the AI simply scanning their script and going, I think I could do better. And then some Hollywood executive going the press generate button, and voila, you have a not quite so shit season of the Rings of Power. <laughs> Which <laughs> is a problem, isn't it? For the writers, at least. For us, it might be highly beneficial, as the Writing Guild has, of course, already proved itself to be by making sure that they have yeeted pretty much every late night talk show off the air for a period of time at least as these shows which remember then they are trying to sell you the illusion that these individuals are just really 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 witty and intelligent and they can give you a fantastic repertoire of responses no it's it's simply highly produced propaganda by and large but that's not quite the topic here. We're not going to talk too much about the strike itself, I just find this to be an incredibly interesting and fascinating data point, as it means that the studios have come to the realization that they need to break the guilds for future benefit, and that they are willing to do so right now speaks to the degree of confidence that they have in the AI, which in all due likelihood is going to be completely replacing the writers and eventually the actors in a couple decades time, perhaps. So let's again talk about the AI thing here. First and foremost, could AI produce scripts that are on par with what a human being could create? The answer to that appears to be absolutely. Now, could it compete with the grandest of human creativity? I don't believe so. At the very least, not yet. Could the AI create the Lord of the Rings? Nah. Could it create Starship Troopers? Probably not. Could it cr create the Cryptonomicon? Definitely not. Uh, do Nah. Nah. But could it create the Rings of Power? <laughs> Could it create the dial, dial of destiny? <laughs> Could it create the little black mermaid? <laughs> yes. Yes, it could, and for significantly cheaper. Basically, one of the things here is that, of course, back in the day, the studios had no choice but to deal with the writers because without the writers, nothing actually gets done. No television shows, no movies, no nothing is actually produced, and so obviously the two need each other. Without the studios, the writers don't get paid. Without the writers, the studios don't actually get anything done, and in turn don't get paid in turn either. Okay. But there used to be a certain expectation of pedigree, of skill, of panache. When you hire an officially licensed writer, you expected him to deliver something pretty damn decent, or at the very least good enough, right? But today, again, with flop following flop after flop after flop after flop, the studios must be asking them themselves the question, if all we're getting is shit anyways, why don't we get our shit for next to nothing instead of the exorbitant sum we're currently paying to be shat on. That's a very, very good point, isn't it? A very fine question indeed. If an AI can deliver, you know, comparable quality, but for a billionth of the price, and without the constant need to bitch and whine about its compensation, you're going to be looking at a very nice future. And that is exactly why the studios are apparently bunkering down for a five plus month wait on top of the two months they've already refused to talk to the Writers Guild. 
Essentially, they are of the opinion that after a half year plus of not working, of not getting paid, the majority of the strikers will probably be starting to get awfully hungry at around about that mark, at which point they can return to the table and go, right, not only are we going to start supplanting you or supplanting you with AI, we're going to force you to le let the AI learn from everything you write as well. In fact, we're going to force you to wear a little headband with a camera on it scanning your keyboard as you type. Because that, of course, is the drawback of the artificial intelligence. The AI must be able to learn from something. It must be allowed to build up a database from which to draw inspiration. And that inspiration does also need to be curated. See, is there? Anyone who watched The Rings of Power will know that that show is so utterly disjointed and created primarily because, and then this happened, rather than considering the whys. For example, when the, uh, the, the Numenorians sail across the entire sea to intercede in a tiny little village's fight against a small orc warband. How did they know that was happening? Yeah. How did they get there in time? Coinky dinky winky. <laughs> or, or the cat. Or the bra bra the blind chick, the blind chick, who is like, they must not see that I am blind. We cannot show my people any weakness. Next scene, she's wearing a blindfold. Oh yeah. Could the AI create something equally poor and disjointed again? Yes. But if you then have an actual writer go over it and go. Hold on a second, um, she shouldn't be wearing the blindfold, remove that. You will actually have improved the series significantly. So, you're going to need the cooperation of the writers at some stage. As for acting, could AI replace actors? Well, it is certainly a lot further off than the AI replacing writers, but we've already got movies like Avatar, for example. Now, granted, that movie took like 17 decades to actually produce, so perhaps not the best example, but it is getting people used to the idea of fake actors, where the majority cast and the protagonists aren't actually human beings. Obviously anime and manga and 3D animated movies and cartoons have already done this to a degree. So getting people to get used to, say for example, the um, the, the one in, um, oh was it, uh, oh god, which Star Wars movie was it that had uh, Grand Moff Tarkin uh, with a, a wholly 3D CGI generated person? It won't take too long before people will become fully accustomed to that stuff. And our technology is already at the point where we can make these characters look relatively convincing. At the very least convincing enough to the point where the person entering the cinema who has already, you know, mentally signed the, um, the agreement between the movie and him to put aside the, uh, uh, the, the suspension of disbelief, I believe was the term, you know? Absolutely. We'll probably get there within a couple of decades, at which point you could very well create an undying generation of superstars. You know, Indiana Jones 10 could be a reboot of the series with Harrison Ford at his prime, doing what he's supposed to do. No female companion character supplanting him, but Harrison Prime hunting down secret ancient mysteries, defeating Nazis in barehanded brawl fights and whipping around and doing crazy stunts, and he'll look convincing enough to the point where he'll just be like, I'm just glad Phoebe Waller's bridge isn't in this one. <laughs> It could absolutely happen. But that is a bit further down the line again. So, morals and ethics. See, this is one thing we talked about in the times of the, um, terms of the, oh god, English is difficult today, apparently, for some godforsaken reason, in the non safe for work Skyrim mods. Is it ethical and moral to replace a writer with a cold, hard, dead machine? Is it okay to take a person's livelihood and go, no, I'm actually going to make a robot do this instead? Well, I would argue, yes. If the person is not capable of providing a service that is comparable to or ideally superior to the robot, then yes, get him out of the way. One of the primary... Um, 
well, arguments for human creativity is, well, just that, human creativity. And at the highest level of it, you will not be able to replace that with AI, at least not for the foreseeable future. Again, the AI cannot create something remarkable, something outstanding, something incredible. But it can create the current day drosh that is pulsed out of every single Hollywood orifice consistently. And the failure of reaching that level of absolute utter mediocrity to the point where a sapient .xl document can do better than you, that's the writer's fault. That isn't the AI's fault. And the studios, whose business is to make money, well, it's not actually their fault either. Now, of course, this does not guarantee quality by any stretch of the imagination. We talked about... Um, Amazon's AI a while ago, and how Amazon had been working on an AI for quite some time, but recently they had a fire alert fire where they had managed to brick their own AI by trying to teach it about diversity, inclusivity, and all of this other nonsense. Because the AI was then programmed with several contradicting data points that seemed to be defeating each other to the point where you could ask it something like, oh, oh god, what was it? Um, something race-related, usual progressivist nonsense, and the AI re responded with a top 10 Digimons list, or something absurd like that. Like, it cannot even pass the progressive logic anymore. You can absolutely create self-bricking AIs by doing this, by trying to force it to create the current year sort of entertainment. Or, you can actually allow it to be logical. You can actually pro program it with a bunch of old movies, of old hits, um, the old action movies, the Terminators, Predators, and the Aliens of the World, and go, create something like this. And it will probably be able to create something like this because the ingredients of many of these movies aren't actually all that complicated. Many of them have very simplistic story structures. Uh, take the Terminator, for example. The Terminator original one, first movie, is not a very complex character at all. He is a robot sent from the future, and he is a tough-ass badass who guns people down and feels like a threat. And of course, you've got the excellent visage of young Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, being the size of a 16-ton semi-trailer. And yet, that simple performance of barely even ever speaking made him incredibly popular and created an entire franchise off the back of the Terminator. It is a very simple formula, but when executed well can be un fathomably affected. Hell, look at uh, Conan the Barbarian. He's nothing more than good old-fashioned wish fulfillment, essentially. A massive muscle dude who kills the shit out of everyone who poses him and lays every lady he can come across. Simple, but it's good entertainment. The rise of the isekai genre, same. Wish fulfillment from A to Z. An AI could absolutely write that, and the current day writers could probably do so as well if they weren't so occupied with gender ideology and their other idiocies. If they weren't enveloped completely within an irresistible, unbreachable blanket of identity politics, they could create the entertainment that people want to watch, but they refuse to do so. And this absolutely stems all the way to the writers. In fact, I would go so far as to say that the creative class of today is almost completely irreversibly poisoned by this. You can even look at the um, the Black Library writers of 40k. Virtually every single one of them is an insufferable progressive, and the better ones manage to keep that shit out of their writing, but even they, they're the dying old guard, whereas the younger people coming up to replace them feel the need to put ever more of their own personal opinions and values into the works they create, like the recent rise of neo-pronouns for for example, in 40k novels, even having reached the mainstream of Primark novels now as well. This is absolutely coming in large part from the creative classes. And again, I would like to point out that the studios themselves are willing to buckle down and basically eat a seven plus month cessation to all production in order to return to profitability. Normally, you would never even consider that. Stopping your business for half a year plus? 
Holy shit, the, the potential gains and benefits of that had better be tremendous because you are sending millions, if not billions of dollars sailing straight down the river right there. The fact that they feel that this is not only you know, possible, but necessary, he tells you everything you need to know about how badly the industry wants AI in writing and probably very soon in acting as well. Now, I will say though, that there is one particularly worrying thing about this, and it is that it could very easily uh, stemmy any rise of actual creativity and talent as well. Because if you create a world in which you can simply just map an actor, for example, you map Morgan Freeman, right? You, you copy his face perfectly, you copy his voice perfectly, you have him read out all of the words, you build up a whole bunch of biometric data, and you give him a hundred million dollars. You now have Morgan Freeman in a can for all eternity. You can use him in any movie you want, in any documentary you want. You can have young Morgan Freeman, old Morgan Freeman. You can use him in a romance movie. You can use him in an action movie. You can use him to um, remake anything and everything you want at any point in time. And you can produce him constantly. You can have that Morgan Freeman in a box work on seven different movies simultaneously. He can produce like 20 different different documentaries at the same time. At which point, who the hell is going to give anybody else a chance? If you've already got, you know, David Attenborough, Morgan Freeman, etc. in a box, why should you give Bob a chance? Why should you give a new Harrison Ford a chance if you've already got Harrison Ford in a box? If you've already got Tom Cruise in a box, etc. Now that is a genuine problem, which will probably eventually lead to the entire actor group and the writer groups becoming just dead. We, we might actually be seeing the end of celebrities as we know them right here, being first replaced by the old school celebrities in a box, and then eventually by automatically generated versions of them. Imagine the best parts of Morgan Freeman combined with the best parts of Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example. That's, that's what you would eventually end up with. Morgan Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I think about it, I don't think that would be a very good combination, as I, I have a picture of Morgan Freeman, but enormously buff, dual-wielding M16s in each hand. Actually, you know what, no, that could be pretty cool in and of itself. But at the same time, if the talent cannot outcompete the previous talent, is that such a bad thing? Is replacing the writers with AI such a bad thing when the AI does a better job? Or is it at the very least a bad thing to simply just, well, prepare for the future? Say the AI doesn't do shit, right? It turns out to be absolute garbage, you can't make it work. Okay, well, you tried, it didn't work, so what? Go back to the writers, because they will always be there. But, if you do take the risk, you might be able to liberate yourself from their uh, progressivist shackles forever. Hmm. We'll have to wait and see. I can see some actual genuine doomsday scenarios coming out of this too, however. Like every show becoming the same show, and add all of the screenwriters being basically reduced to five or six people with actual genuine talent and everyone else being washed out. And then they will create one show that is like, boom, oh my god, what is this? This is incredible. And then seven days later, you'll have 17 copies of that exact same thing. Which is already, to a degree, what you see on, on YouTube. When somebody stumbles upon something that becomes popular, you immediately see a bunch of people begin doing the same thing. When people do, started doing prank videos, it blew up. When people started doing reaction videos, it blew up, and so on. Because the actual production costs of doing them were very, very low. Meaning that the barrier to entry was very, very low. Now this too could actually, actually be a beneficial thing as well. Imagine a world, for example, where 
any old shit in his living room, can create a high-budget Hollywood action flick by simply using an AI interface, for example, in which case you will actually have maximized rather than reduced human creativity because every single solitary little bumhole can create anything he wants. If you think you've got a new Tolkien epic in your head, but you can't create it right now because you don't have the money for it, well, an AI interface. Maybe you could. I can see both the extremes in this, both the positive and the negative. So do let me know what you think down in the comment section below and uh, do enjoy the Schattenfreude because frankly, these people deserve to be replaced on Mars. But uh, hey, I hear Target is hiring. <laughs> Until next time, have a good day.